The UA Sports Festival was one of the highlights of My Hero Academia so far. It gave us a ton of amazing moments including the evolution of Todoroki, the One Fall Vestiges and of course Deku's general craziness. Every year there are a series of preliminary events that are randomly generated by a computer and the students who manage to get through them then go on to the main event which is always a 1v1 matchup of some kind. Now a couple of weeks ago I made one of my most popular videos to date which hypothesized what a next gen sequel to My Hero Academia could look like. If you didn't see that then I strongly recommend watching it first as today we're doing a part 2 where we'll discuss some crazy potential upgrades to the sports festival as well as who would compete and what the best potential matchups could be. Just before we get into it though, we are still on that road to 100k so every single subscription is very much appreciated. Okay so I figured we'd start the video with perhaps the biggest change that would differentiate the next generation sports festival from the one that we already saw. As Aizawa said, the event has become even more popular than the Olympics in Japan but that wording kind of gives away the fact that maybe outside Japan it might not be as popular as we think. I mean, what reason would people outside of the country have to watch a bunch of Japanese school kids compete when we know that quirks are kind of like a worldwide thing so yeah I don't really think there's a reason for people outside to watch it. However, what if in the next generation the UA Sports Festival isn't just an opportunity for students to show off their quirks and their skills to the professionals but instead it serves as a qualifier for an international sports festival with all the top schools from around the world so think of it like the Triwizard Tournament or something like that. In this system, the final four contestants of the UA Festival, they would be selected as part of an elite squad to represent UA at these annual global games. What's more, the winner of the festival is automatically appointed team captain of their year group. This means that they get to lead the others and kind of make core tactical decisions during the international event. But if you're a bit confused, I'll use a quick comparison. So if we apply these rules to the first sports festival, that would mean that Bakugo, Todoroki, Tokuyami and Tenya would have represented UA's first years in the international competition with Kachan being the team captain. Although he would only be team captain for the first year group so each year group from UA has their own team. This would be a great honour for pretty much any student as all hero agencies across the planet would want a piece of you after something like this. Now as we all know, Eri would be the main protagonist of this sequel series and given her humble personality I don't really think she'd be hell bent on winning the UA Sports Festival. That said, as one of the members of the All Might Blue group which I spoke about in the last video, she'd certainly be one of the favourites to make it into this elite squad. Tamashiro is another one who would also have high expectations, although in his case I don't even think he'd be nervous, for him it's more of a question of how soon till I win this thing. There are other students that I'd like to explain before we get into the 1v1 matchups, but for now the last person I want to mention is Katsuma and his epic quirk evolution. This is a character who was first introduced to us in the Heroes Rising movie and his quirk is known as Cell Activation which in practice acts like a regeneration quirk and it heals the injuries of the people that he touches and gets them back into top physical condition. But I know what you're thinking, how could an ability like this actually win when it's paired up against the powerful offensive quirks that he'd no doubt come up against in the main event? Well, what I'm about to say is kind of inspired by something that I read in the Black Clover manga but what if Katsuma could activate this quirk on himself for a period of time and during that period, let's say it's about a minute, his whole body glows as his cells are consistently regenerating and activating. This would make him temporarily invincible, meaning that you can't pierce his skin, you can't burn him, you can't freeze him. The downside is that once the time is up, he can actually get very, very exhausted. So pretty much like Ochako when she throws up, something similar to that. But with that out of the way, let's get into how everything would go down in the next gen sports festival. Like I said before, the preliminary events change each year and being the uncultured swine that I am, I actually had no idea that cavalry battles were a real life thing. Like I thought they made it up for the show but when I was looking into it, no, this is very very real. The two events that I'd like to see replace the cavalry battle and the obstacle course uh, would be a tug of war and a relay race. In the next generation, team events are more important than ever because the winners of the festival will have to work in a team together and represent UA on the global stage. I imagine that a quirk powered relay race and a quirk powered tug of war, I mean it would be so epic and it would obviously require a lot of you know teamwork and coordination. So yeah, I personally those are my favourites but do let me know if you have any other good ideas down below. Once those events are done, only 16 students will be remaining for the final event which is a fighting tournament. 
In my opinion, this is the one thing that shouldn't change from the first sports festival. Just a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, all-out battle with your quirks. That is way more entertaining than any other kind of gimmick you can think of. Of all the kids we've seen so far, which to be honest isn't that many, um, we would have Tamashiro definitely there, Eri for sure, Katsuma, the Tongue Tank kid, the Assault Dust kid, the Hula Hoop kid, and then nine more kids who we don't know about yet because let's be honest, not everyone's going to be from that same elementary school. And the final remaining place would go to Kota, who's another character who would have had a crazy quirk evolution by this point, and I'll explain why he would have had this in a second. As we know it now, Kota's quirk enables him to emit water from his hands, but as we know, his parents were the pro heroes known as Water Hose. That hero name is important because it implies that they could both emit water at a high pressure, and this is supported by the fact that they messed up Muscular's face, leaving him with a scar and also missing an eye. So that means, at a minimum, Teenage Kota would be able to emit water from his hands at a very high pressure. If he was to apply this correctly and you know with the right training, then he could use this high pressured water to give himself the power of flight. Think of it like this jetpack video, only instead of the water coming out a jetpack, it's coming out of his hands instead. Last thing I want to mention on his quirk upgrade was that similar to how Getin can manipulate the temperature of his ice, Kota should be able to alter the temperature of his water. That would come in super handy, I mean imagine if he was able to emit boiling hot water, that would be pretty damn lethal. The reason why I think Kota would have to have an amazing quirk evolution similar to this is because, as I mentioned in part 1, he's a full year younger than Eri. And a few of you in the comments mentioned how he could maybe join the school a year early, but I was thinking like obviously in order to do that, you need to demonstrate some kind of exceptional skill that shows that you're capable of joining Japan's top hero school a year earlier than you should. Now, when the matchups begin, a battle that we'd have to see is Kota against Katsuma, or as I like to call it, the Deku Derby. Unlike Katsuma, Kota's quirk gives him long range capabilities, meaning that he can fire a quick attack right from the jump, similar to what we saw from Todoroki. For example, he could blast two fountains of hot water from each of his hands, which come crashing towards his classmate. Because Katsuma doesn't have an attack based quirk, he would have likely trained his body to be more agile and compensate for his lack of offensive power. On that basis, as soon as the match begins, he'd have to activate that super move that I was talking about earlier and then immediately attempt to dodge the water. Remember that although he can't be physically hurt for about 60 seconds, the sheer force and pressure of the water can still physically push him out the ring. If Katsuma was successful in dodging that attack, his superior physical strength could enable him to quite quickly reach Kota and begin to push him out of the ring. However, thanks to the immense amount of water pressure that Kota is now able to harness, he can use his hands to propel himself into the air and kind of like flip over Katsuma. And he could do this to quickly readjust himself so that he's facing Katsuma's back. And once he's in position, he can deliver his strongest possible blast of water to force Katsuma out of the ring. Kota would likely be the victor of this matchup, although in theory, maybe Katsuma's cell activation quirk could perhaps uh, maybe enable him to reach a level of speed and strength that's beyond the level of what can be achieved by normal training. If something like that was the case, then maybe he would be able to take Kota by surprise and also react quicker to the attempts to push him out the ring. The next battle is one that I think should and would be the final of the entire UA Sports Festival, and that is of course Eri against Tamashiro. As I said in part 1, Eri would have been training with Aizawa for almost a decade at this point, so her quirk would have evolved far beyond what we know of it currently. A cool idea that I had is that she would be able to invert the use of her quirk, so rather than rewinding things, she can also fast forward things, and if applied in a spatial way, she can fast forward herself into different positions. This is another Black Clover reference, but I feel that Julius's movements in this scene best represent what I'm trying to explain. On top of that, Eri would now have her power pretty much under control. For example, if Tamashiro was to send a binging ball directly at Eri, she could swipe her hand and make it evaporate and just disappear out of existence. Obviously super overpowered, but I mean that's, that's what her quirk is anyway. So how would this fight go down? Much like Bakugo, Tamashiro loves equality and would show an equal level of mercilessness whether he's up against male or female contestants. His army of binging balls would charge full speed at Eri and due to the sheer volume of them, there's no way that a few balls aren't making a little bit of contact. That being said, Eri's fast forward ability would be enough to get past the initial wave of binging balls and it would put her just a couple of meters away from where uh, Tamashiro is standing. When thinking about potential upgrades for his quirk, 
Uh, naturally, the speed of the balls and the biting ability, those would be enhanced, but it would also make sense if he could manipulate the size to create these massive chain chomps to defend him. With those two massive balls both standing in his way, I mean, you wouldn't even be able to see him, let alone touch him. So Eri wouldn't be able to actually get to Tamashiro until she rewinds those two big balls out of existence. But in the time it takes her to swipe them away, it can leave an opening for Tamashiro to send her flying backwards with a binging ball straight to the chest. He could then run towards Eri, and as she's a bit confused from being taken by surprise, he could then try to throw out the ring like Bakugo did to Todoroki. One thing that's important to remember is that Eri's quirk is an accumulation type. Accumulation types need to build up an element or substance over a period of time in order for them to work. In the case of Fat Gum, he needs to build up his fat so that he can use his quirk, but in Eri's case, we still have no idea what the element or substance that she needs to build up actually is. But whatever it is, throughout the entire sports festival, she would have been using it up, you know, in the relay race, in the tug of war, and in the first three rounds of the uh, fighting tournament, she would have been using up whatever she's accumulated. Because of this, Eri is at a massive disadvantage in the final, and she would need to expend the last of her rewind quirk to stop herself getting thrown out of the ring. She's effectively fighting quirkless at this point. If he's quick, which I'm sure he is, Tamashiro could materialize a binging ball and then grab onto it. The ball could propel itself forwards towards Eri and pull Tamashiro along for the ride. Given that he'd likely have more momentum than Eri, not to mention the fact that he'd probably be heavier than she is, once they clash in the middle of the arena, he'd be able to pin her to the ground, which would render him the winner of the sports festival. Although a lot of that is obviously a bit lucky due to the fact that Eri has a quirk that needs to accumulate something and then progressively runs out as the day goes on. Remember that you don't actually need to knock your opponent out the ring, you can also immobilize them or just get them to say they give up. Or just make them pass out, whichever works. Naturally, Eri would never give up, but given her quirk at this point would have all but run out, once she's pinned to the ground, it's basically game over. Other matchups that I'd like to see would be the Assault Dust Kid versus Kota, and also the Tongue Tank Kid versus Eri. One match in particular that I think would be really messy would be Tamashiro up against the Hula Hoop Kid. I mean, you just have a bunch of people throwing stuff across the stage, it would be a mess by the time those two are finished. When everything's said and done, I think the four students to represent UA's first years on the global stage would be Tamashiro as captain, Eri, the assault dust kid, and, you know, likely someone that we don't already know, but if we have to pick someone that we do know, I'm gonna say Kota. All I'm saying is there are many kids in the world of My Hero Academia that we just do not know anything about yet. Just before we finish the video, I'd like to say thank you to this commenter for giving me the initial inspiration for the idea of an international sports festival. I kind of took the idea and ran with it, but thank you for the initial concept. Also, shout out to Tristan who sent me this awesome art of Deku that he drew after I did the first part of this video. Much appreciated. Thanks for watching as always and peace out.